Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about what vegetables you can grow in August for a fall harvest. Most people only grow one round of crops which they'll plant in the spring and then harvest in the summer. But if you're like me, you wanna grow things until the snow falls. This is my first time growing crops for the fall, so this video is more of a learn with me kind of video rather than a full blown tutorial. I've done a lot of research, I watched a lot of videos, so I'm feeling pretty confident about it. Before you start growing anything, there are two things that you'll wanna determine crop growing time, and when the first frost is. The first frost determines how much growing time you have, which in turn will affect the types of crops that you choose to grow, because obviously you want something that's gonna mature within that time period. The first frost in Toronto typically occurs around the first week of November, so that means that I've got about three months to grow my crops. If you haven't already germinated your seeds, I definitely recommend doing that ASAP. I'm filming this video the first week of August, and I probably should have germinated my seeds a couple weeks ago, but the crops I'm choosing to grow are pretty fast growing, so I'm pretty confident that they'll still be okay. On that note, you'll want to choose crops that are A, fast growing, and B, cool weather tolerant. These include, but are not limited to, the following. Beets, carrots, turnips, radishes, lettuce, spinach, arugula, green onions, kale, Swiss chard, cilantro, parsley, dill, peas, and beans. Wow, that was a lot to memorize. <laughs> now, to clarify, when I say cool weather crops, I don't mean that you can grow these guys outside in the dead of winter. You can start growing these guys now so that they can reap the benefits of that sweet, sweet sunlight. And then as the temperature starts to cool down, they'll still be able to survive. Keep in mind that the month of August is usually pretty hot. So if you're planning to plant your seeds outside or keep your seedlings outside, make sure they're not getting too much harsh sunlight. Otherwise they could just fry up and then you're left with nothing. I recommend putting them in a partially shaded spot or putting up something that'll help diffuse the sunlight. This could be something like putting up a mesh screen or just hiding them behind some other plants. For me, I like to use my shelving unit as a filter. As I mentioned in my July update video, I ended up moving my rat tail radishes beside the shelf so that the sunlight wouldn't directly be on it all the time. So let's take a look at what I'm gonna be planting this month. So these are what I'm planning to grow for the fall. We've got a couple of, oh no. So we have some kale, we got a lettuce mix, and we also have a couple varieties of radishes. We have some white ones, and then you know, kind of the more classic red ones. Got some spinach, and we also have the spinach seeds that I harvested. And then we also have a bunch of random seeds in here. Um, I'm just gonna be using the Swiss chard. And then we have some of the sugar snap peas, which I'm going to wait to germinate those because they are quite fast growing. And if I were to plant them outside now, they would just fry up in the sun. So I'm not too worried about not getting those in before the fall harvest. So I will likely start those in September. Also shout out to our neighbors for donating their egg cartons for me to germinate my seeds in. Like literally look at all these. <laughs> So this is my very ugly diagram of my balcony. I just kind of made note of the pots that I plan to put stuff in and what's currently in them right now. So this is rat tail radishes, green onions, tomatoes, and then there's a few empty pots. And so these are kind of what my plans are. I still have to figure out what I want to put in this pot, just so I can kind of get an idea of where I want to plant things and uh, how I kind of want to move things around. So I will actually show you what I want to do now. Oh no. So this container right here used to have Thai basil in it, but I recently harvested it and I'm currently prepping the soil to plant. I believe I'm gonna do lettuce in here. No, just kidding, that's a lie. I'm gonna directly sow the radishes in here. <laughs> it's not a super deep container, so I'm not gonna get very big radishes. Um, I do have to top it off with some soil, so at least if the soil's here, then I can plant the seedlings a little higher, so they'll maybe grow to be about that big, which, you know, not too bad. You know, we just kind of use the radishes for salads and stuff. It's not like we need anything super massive, so I'm not too concerned about it, but obviously it would definitely be better if I was growing these directly into the ground. But but that's my plan for this container right here. My plan for this container right here, as you can see, we have all these lovely cherry tomatoes that have started ripening. And on these two plants, there aren't any new flowers or any new tomatoes that are forming. So I think once these tomatoes are done ripening, I'm going to get rid of these two plants and in here I'm going to put the kale. The container has a decent depth, so I think the kale should be fine in here. We've grown kale in these types of containers in the previous years and they seem to do just fine. This container right here, I'm going to be taking out the green onions and moving them into this container over here. So I'm just gonna kind of consolidate everything together. However, I want to wait until this tomato plant is done producing fruits because 
because as you can see, we've got a couple of flowers, which means we got a few more tomatoes coming in. So I'm gonna let that one, you know, have a little bit longer in this pot before moving uh, the rest of the green onions into here. Unfortunately, I don't know if this rat tail radish is going to bloom in time. It's actually kind of getting a bit of heat damage, so I'm not too sure how much longer it's gonna survive. But anyways, once this container has everything out of it, this is where I'm gonna be planting half spinach and half of the lettuce mix. This section of our balcony is a little bit of disarray just because uh, these are old containers which stuff have been growing in that I harvested and I don't really have anywhere to put them so they're just kind of hanging out here. This one had Swiss chard in it so I think I'm gonna put the Swiss chard back in here because it seemed to do really well in a container. I might probably get a few more bunches going in here and in this one I still have no idea what I'm gonna put. I might try to do another round of dill but I also might try to I don't know, see if I can put some more spinach or lettuce in here. I think it might be too tiny, like I won't get too many clusters, but um, yeah, I'll let you know. Sorry about the train. And over here in the rat tail radish pod, as you can see, the pods are growing like crazy, so I have no doubt that I'm gonna be able to harvest these in a month's time. However, that being said, there are still a bunch of baby pods that are forming. Um, so I think this one's actually gonna be producing the pods uh, for quite some time. But what I wanna do is put the sugar snap peas back in here, just cause it has the tomato cage that I usually let them climb on. However, they do not do very well in the heat. So I'm gonna hold off on germinating the seeds for now. So I'm gonna likely germinate those seeds in September. And then once, you know, hopefully these guys, I'll give them about another month, month and a half to uh, finish producing the pods. The pods usually take about 45 days. And then, you know, I'm gonna replace them with some sugar snap peas. I'm starting off with my radishes. I'm directly sewing them into my container. So I made a line in the center because I'm doing half red and half white. I added some tags later on so that I remembered which side was which. I started creating my five millimeter deep holes for the seeds, but then I wasn't happy with how the spacing was, so I covered them up and started all over again. On the left side, I'm doing the red radishes, and on the right, I'm doing the white radishes. For the other seeds, I'm using some good old egg cartons. If you've watched my other videos, you know that I love germinating seeds in cardboard egg cartons because they can be planted directly into the soil and will eventually turn into compost. If you're wondering why I'm using two envelopes of spinach, it's because I wanted to test out the seeds that I harvested from my spinach plants, you know, to make sure I did it right. <laughs> but I also used some from the original seed pack, just in case I didn't. Next, I'm going to add my kale and Swiss chard seeds. For the lettuce mix, you get a variety of lettuce seeds, so it's kind of like a giant surprise bag. I originally put one seed in each hole, then I started putting two seeds per hole, then I just scattered them like confetti. Was this a good idea? I don't know, we'll find out in a few weeks. I put my seedlings on the bottom shelf because it's the perfect spot to get some sunlight, but not too much that it'll fry them. So to recap, if you're planning to plant stuff for the fall, you'll wanna first determine when your first frost is and then choose crops that are fast growing. If you haven't already, start germinating your seeds now. Make sure your seedlings get plenty of water, especially in that first germination period. And make sure they're not getting too much harsh sunlight. As the weather cools down, it's likely that you won't need to water your crops as often, but still make sure you pay attention to your plants' needs. And finally, keep an eye on the weather forecast and if there's any chance of frost, harvest your crops. I'll keep you guys updated on how my fall garden goes, so wish me luck. Like and subscribe, I'll see you later. Bye!